Do you need to work from home without being home? Do you need a secure and insecure network such as a hotel, coffee shop, or a convention center Wi-Fi? Or do you need to provide a secure connection at a convention and provide file sharing among your employees at the convention? Well, this device might be the device for you. This is the GLAXT1800 Slate AX. This is a new Wi-Fi 6 travel router from GLINET, which I believe stands for Good Life. This product was released in May 2022, and it is a true pocket size router. Literally fits in your pocket. It's roughly the size of uh, two or three pixels. So you can see the thickness is more obviously, but the width is about the same with this uh, case, and it is a little bit shorter. The, some of the specs of the device itself, it has a quad-core 1.2 gigahertz processor, it has three gigabit ports, a USB 3.0 port, has a USB-C power import, and when you unfold the antennas, you have a micro SD card slot. And on the other side, you have a customizable uh, switch. You can load up a VPN service on this device, and then whatever internet that you connect this to, the devices that connect to this will be going through the VPN. So say you're at a Starbucks in Seattle, and you need to make it look like you're in Dallas. Well, you could load up a NordVPN service, for example, or OpenVPN or WireGuard VPN, load that on this device. This will connect to the Seattle Starbucks, but then your phone that's connecting to this would actually be routed through a VPN that's uh, hitting a server in Dallas. And then for all intents and purposes, you are in Dallas. The things that come with the device, it does come with a USB-C power adapter. It is a five volt, four amp adapter, which provides 20 watts. It only came with the US adapter for me. And as far as how you do this, you simply twist it in and it locks. It comes with a ethernet cable. So you could plug this into the WAN port and then the other side would plug into the hotel ethernet connection, convention ethernet connection, etc. You get a thank you card. You get a let's get started guide. Very easy one, two, three steps on the back. We'll go through some of those steps. It comes with a warranty and support card and some information on how to reset the device. Uh, you might want to hold on to this because if you haven't used it in a while and then you go to log in and you don't remember your password, then you're going to want to know how to reset the device. I guess uh, for future purposes, let's just go through that now. So on the far side here, the, the button is the reset button. If you hold it for 10 seconds, it'll reset the entire router to factory settings. So you'll, if you forgot the password or whatever, hold this for 10 seconds and the entire thing will reset. It will need to have power while you're doing this. So because I'm using this as a travel router, I didn't necessarily want to use the power adapter. I'm wanting to use this while I'm traveling around. So I'm actually going to use a power bank that's capable of providing 15 watts of power to this device. So plug that in and we should get some lights on the front when it's ready. As far as the initial setup, there's going to be a sticker on the bottom of the device that has your IP address, SSID, and key. So from whatever device you're going to connect with, you're going to want to connect to the SSID here as far as the Wi-Fi list. The password is going to be the key field. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so on Wi-Fi we've connected to the GLAXT1800. And then from Chrome, we'll need to go to 192.168.8.1. Uh, your first time here, you'll need to set a new password. Your second time here, you can use whatever password that you set. The very first page that you'll get to is the internet page, and you'll need to choose one of four options. So as far as giving internet to this device, you can plug in an ethernet cable to the WAN port, and then plug that into the ethernet jack that's at the coffee shop or your corporate network or your convention network. You can use the Wi-Fi to connect to another Wi-Fi. You can use the USB 3.0 port to use USB tethering, or you can use that USB 3.0 port to plug in a USB modem. 
So for this example, we're going to have this connect to Wi-Fi. All right, so from this Windows laptop, you click on your little internet thing down there, and you're going to choose the SSID on the bottom of the unit. It's a GLAXT1800 in my case. I'm gonna go ahead and connect automatically, put in the key that's also on the bottom of the device. Hit next, and then do you wanna allow the computers? I'm gonna say no for extra privacy. It's gonna take a little while to do the network, uh, to check the network requirements because it doesn't have internet yet. So you have to wait for the Windows machine to time out on trying to discover the internet. And eventually we should see that the connection is secured, but it has no internet. So there you have it, no internet and it's secured. So now from Chrome, you can go to 192.168.8.1 that is the IP address that's on the sticker on the bottom of the router. You go there and I've already logged in so you don't see the initial setup screen here, but initially you'll have to, to set up a password and I think choose a language. But after that, you'll log in with the password that you chose and you'll be taken to this internet tab. From here you'll see you have multiple ways you can connect. You can use the Ethernet cable, repeater, which is the Wi-Fi, tethering, which is USB cable to your phone, and cellular, which is the USB modem. We're gonna set up the Wi-Fi connection. This will probably be the most common. If you're using this for the hotel Wi-Fi, you would be choosing repeater. You'll select your repeater options. The defaults are usually good. And then you're going to hit connect. It's going to scan for the available wireless networks. And for demo purposes, I have set up a free compromised Wi-Fi connection here. This might be your hotel. This might be a hacker at an airport. And this, you'll see here these other ones, they have a little lock on them. This doesn't even have a lock on it. It's completely open, which means everything that goes across this network is going to be easily uh, examined by a hacker. There is no password for this one, so we simply hit apply. So now the router is connecting to this free compromised Wi-Fi connection, and there we go. We see we have an IP address and DNS server from this compromised network. So in order to use this compromised Wi-Fi safely, we're going to add a VPN service. So hit the VPN tab over here. And from VPN dashboard, you'll see we have a couple options. We have VPN client and VPN server. We need to set up a VPN client. If you're more advanced, uh, you can do a lot with this, uh, this little router. You can both, you could buy two of these routers and have one be a server and set that at your home. And then the other one that you take with you would be the client. Assuming that you're new to all this, we're gonna go the easy route and go with an OpenVPN NordVPN setup. So you hit setup now, and they already have an integration with NordVPN. So all you have to do is put in your username and password and click save credentials and get servers. If you're using something like a cell phone, you might want to change the protocol from UDP to TCP only. Uh, sometimes cell phone providers will block UDP traffic. And then from location, say, you know, you're supposed to be working from home in Dallas. So we can scroll down the list here and find some Dallas servers on NordVPN. You can add additional locations if you want. Hit apply. And in this case, it's grabbing 10 Dallas VPN servers from NordVPN. So here's the list there. We can delete individual ones if for some reason we didn't like one of them or all of them. Now back over on the VPN dashboard side, 
we need to enable the OpenVPN connection. Before I do that, I want to show that right now we have this residential IP address. And after turning on NordVPN, our IP address will be one that's coming from NordVPN from a Dallas VPN server. Okay, so we're connected. We have this IP address coming from Nord, and if we do an IP test now, there we have, we see that we have that NordVPN Dallas VPN server as our IP address. As I mentioned earlier, there is a switch on the side of the device that's customizable, and this is the perfect situation for where you would want to use a switch. Now that we have NordVPN installed as a open VPN client, we can go to more settings, go to toggle button settings, and then under toggle button function, instead of no function, we'll choose open VPN client. So now when we move that switch to the left, we can turn the NordVPN on, and when we turn to the right, we can turn NordVPN off. Hit apply to save the changes. One more thing that you might want to consider is changing the DNS provider. Personally, I like the CloudFlow DNS, so you can choose manual DNS and choose 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 as your DNS servers, those are the Cloudflare DNS. Another option for increased uh, uh, privacy, just using a DNS provider on its own, the traffic could potentially be sniffed. So choosing encrypted DNS and then doing DNS over TLS will provide an extra layer of protection. So there you go, you can choose Next DNS or Cloudflare itself as the DNS provider, hit apply. And now even your DNS traffic is being obfuscated as it travels across the internet. Leaving your DNS traffic open will actually allow hackers and advertisers to sniff out the websites that you're hitting and use that to tailor ads or you know, use that information against you in some way. Now that we've done all this, let's try to do a speed test. This isn't going to be the greatest speeds because we're using a Wi-Fi connection to go to a Wi-Fi hotspot that then goes to the Wi-Fi in this house. So there are multiple hops happening, but the speed is still good enough to use for any type of activity that you might be doing, apart from streaming or gaming. If you want to stream or game, that would be a situation where you would want to turn the NordVPN or other VPN service off to provide the fastest possible connection. So overall, I highly recommend this device. Let's do the unboxing. Within the box are some literature to like their Facebook page, a quick start guide, 
warranty information. Let's take a look at what accessories are included. You get a Cat5 cable, or network cable of some sort. Uh, this is a USB-C power adapter. It provides 5 volts at 4 amps, 20 watts. And I am in the United States, so it came with a United States adapter for the adapter. This is a travel router, so it is quite small. 